Welcome back to Next Generation. Today's video was inspired from the leftover wood we had from our shower bench video. And we always have leftover plants. Yeah, we do. So can you guess what we're making? An exterior floating shelf. Yeah. For our plants. Of course. <laughs> but this could be used for anything. We're putting it on our patio. Whatever you would like, you put on the shelf. That's but we have a lot of plants and all the planters are on the floor, even our smaller ones. So we want to move sure. the small plants up onto this blank wall, what better way than with a floating shelf? It's calling for a shelf, it's just blank. So if you guys didn't see the shower bench video, we got African mahogany for that wood. We just got it from the local Yumbri, <laughs> the local Yumbri yard. <laughs> we got African mahogany from the local Yumbri. <laughs> oh, no. And we love it. It's just a great hard exterior wood that could get wet. We're putting plants on it. We're going to be watering those plants. So we just thought it would be a good fit. Plus we had leftovers and we really just needed to get one more eight foot board. So yep. worked out and great. Even though this will be under an overhang because it's on our patio, we live in New Orleans and the humidity is 100,000%. <laughs> yep. So it's going to get wet. You can't leave wood outside even if it's not exposed to the rain because the moisture still makes it warp and I've even seen mildew. So, yep. doesn't work here. So besides the wood, the other things that you'll need are liquid nails. We used one that's specifically for exterior use and we like to use a caulk gun for this. It's the easiest way to apply it. We're using two and a half inch exterior screws for ours because of the size of the wood that we're using. But of course, this is all gonna depend on the thickness of wood that you're using. A nail gun, a drill, and we like to use a pocket hole. I believe it's called a Craig to make pocket holes. If you wanted your screws hidden, then you'll also need that. And you will be putting our shelf into brick. So if you're gonna be putting it into any type of masonry, then we would recommend some concrete anchor screws, I believe they're called. Yep. And a hammer drill to apply those into your masonry because you can get a bit for your regular drill to mm -hmm. apply them, but we just don't want to burn out our drill because we use it so often. So we don't really like to use our drill on masonry or brick or things like that. It's a good tip. You'll also need some sealer because we sealed ours. Actually, it's called a varnish, but yep. seal, varnish, stain, whatever you would like to finish yours. You'll need that and whatever you'd like to use to apply it. We used a foam roller which is key because we used a regular roller and it got fluffs all over it. It did. So now that we have all of our material, let's get started with the build. First things first, measure your space. Our shelf's gonna be four foot. So we need five four foot boards. Actually, you need six. Here's why I went wrong. You need six. Six four foot long boards and you need four support beams, the width of your shelf. Ours is gonna be eight inches deep mm -hmm. or wide. And just a tip, we like to cut a clean edge on the end of the board before we make all of our other cuts. Since I knew I would be cutting six four foot boards, I went ahead and put a template on the fence of the miter saw. And so this way I have an indicator of where the saw is gonna land on the wood. And I don't have to continue to line everything up. It just kind of speeds up the cutting process. I recommend you do it if you have some scrap wood laying around. So now that we have all of our cuts, what I like to do is lay everything out, make sure it lines up, and then I'm gonna pre-drill everything since we'll be adding liquid nails. I don't want to pre-drill and add the nails at the same time. I wanna make sure everything's lined up and then I'll assemble it. Also, you'll be seeing us assemble it upside down. Yeah. So this view that you're seeing is the upside down version of the shelf in case you're a little confused. <laughs> Yes. And just a tip to make your life a little easier when pre-drilling, we like to use clamps. They're like your best friend. They're like a third, fourth, and fifth hand <laughs> because you don't have them. So we've got everything pre-drilled. We're gonna sand it and get it ready for varnish before we assemble. Exciting. I marked where the boards all go back together. So when we do go to assemble everything, we can just line it up A to A, B yes. to B, and so on. And it just makes it so much easier this way. So you don't have to remember which board went where, just take it from us, mark your boards. All right, so once you're done sanding, you really wanna be sure to wipe away all of the dust and residue. 
I recommend a damp rag, wipe everything down, let it fully dry before we add our varnish. So now our boards are ready for varnish, seal, stain, whatever you're using for your shelf, it's ready. All right, so we've got everything varnished. It's looking good. We want to assemble it, but before we do that, we need to do one thing, okay? We need to level the backboard on the wall and pre-drill in those anchors into the concrete or the wood, wherever you're gonna be assembling this to or attaching it to the wall. We wanna pre-drill that because once we assemble it, it's gonna to be tough to get the drill in there and you're gonna to have to use an angled drill bit. You can't angle a hammer drill. A hammer drill. We pre-drilled through the wood with yep. a regular drill and then we used the hammer drill just to go through the brick. That's right. And you'll see all of our beautiful red from before we painted our house come out of these holes and <laughs> make a glorious mess on our yes. nice white painted wall. We're gonna go ahead and add liquid nails to all of the joints and screw those together to make sure they're secure and in place. One tip would be to start with your front board which is the board that has the pocket holes. Yeah. Because we didn't. I didn't think it through. And so now we have to use an angled drill bit to get those on. It so was not fun. From us. You know, we, we marked all the wood. We had A to A, B to B. <laughs> we were all good to go. And I attached the backboard first, which is just a screw right through. And then, like Jen said, ended up having to use the angled drill bit, yes. which I didn't want to use as much as I had to, but I had to apply eight nails, that eight screws that way. And the reason being is because this structure is so small, the drill doesn't fit yeah. to hold it straight on top of the hole that you're drilling into. So do your pocket holes first and you will thank us later. So yeah, that was a lot of fun and no, it was, it was no fun. <laughs> so as you can see, we've only secured the frame together. So we've got this beautiful box. We're gonna attach that to the wall first before adding our top boards, just because I wanna see how they lay out and they space between the front and the backboard because we have a little bit of bowing going on with the front and backboard. We'll have to line that up and then we'll place our center boards. All right, here we go. I've got my frame level. It looks really good. I'm gonna screw this to the wall with our anchors, our, our concrete, concrete anchors. Anchor screws? They're anchor screws. They're really cool. You don't need an anchor and they can hold a lot of weight. So we're gonna use three of those. Be plenty of weight to hold the plants and it's gonna be nice and secure. So now that we have our rectangle frame on the wall, we're ready to add our final touch of the four boards on top to close this thing in and bring it to life. It's pretty secure, I must say. I could probably do some pull-ups on it, but I'm not going to. Yeah, let's not. And we're gonna attach the top boards just with our nail gun. You can add liquid nails if you would like under your boards. You can do screws if you would like to attach them whatever you would like to do, but the nail gun will be perfect because it's not actually holding any weight. It's really just there for love. All right, do you guys love it? I love it. It's I, so pretty. I can't tell you how long this needed to be done. I mean, the patio looks like it's coming to life. We may just go ahead and add this all the way around, maybe, for more <laughs> plants. And show you guys a patio transformation because it's come a long way and this oh shelf gosh. has just topped it off that much more from the red house and the red tile brick to what we have now it's beautiful i'm falling in love with it i love your vision and now we have this wood accent and it's just that much better so i hope you guys make it if you do tag us on our instagram we are always checking on there we're always showing sneak peeks of our DIYs, so be sure you're following us on there. We're watching. Don't miss out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, Bye guys. guys.